this video, I'd like to point out a very interesting relation between the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A transpose A and A A transpose. This relation is as follows. The non-zero eigenvalues of A transpose A are the same as the non-zero eigenvalues of A A transpose. Also, the number of non-zero eigenvalues for A transpose A is equal to the number of non-zero eigenvalues of A A transpose is equal to the non-zero singular values of the matrix A, which is equal to the rank of the matrix A. So the number of the non-zero eigenvalues of A transpose A or A A transpose is equal to the rank of the matrix A. Let's first see why this is true and let's second see why this is important. Suppose that you have a matrix A which was 4 by 2, then the matrix A is equal to U sigma V transpose and then A transpose A is equal to B sigma transpose U transpose U sigma V transpose and A A transpose is equal to U sigma V transpose V sigma transpose U transpose. Now, assuming that the matrix A was a 4 by 2 matrix, then sigma will be a 4 by 2 matrix, and so sigma transpose sigma will be a 2 by 2 matrix equal to sigma 1 squared 0 0, sigma 2 squared, assuming that the rank is 2, and also sigma sigma transpose will be equal to sigma 1 squared 0, 0, 0, 0, sigma 2 squared, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0, as we have seen before. Now, we know that this matrix, this diagonal matrix, is the eigenvalues matrix of A transpose A. So, the non-zero eigenvalues of A transpose A are equal to sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square. Similarly, for this matrix right here, this is the matrix of eigenvalues for A A transpose. And so, the non-zero eigenvalues of A A transpose are again sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square. And since the singular value decomposition is a general decomposition for any matrix A, then always the non-zero eigenvalues of A A transpose are the same as the non-zero eigenvalues of A transpose A. Very well, now for this matrix right here, which is sigma sigma transpose, this is a 4 by 4 matrix, and so we have four eigenvalues. The first one is equal to sigma 1 square, the second one is equal to sigma 2 squared, the third one is equal to the fourth one is equal to 0. So the remaining eigenvalues of the larger of the two will be zeros. So that's about the eigenvalues. What about the eigenvectors? We know that the eigenvectors of A transpose A are those vectors V. So if we get the eigenvectors of A transpose B, then we get V1, V2, up to Vn. But some of those will have a non-zero eigenvalue and the remaining will have a zero eigenvalue. So let's talk only about the vectors up to Vr because those have non-zero singular values and so non-zero eigenvalues. And for those vectors, we know that AV1 is equal to sigma 1 u1 and also in general avi is equal to sigma i u i this means that if you got the eigenvectors of a transpose a then you could easily get the eigenvectors of a a transpose because the eigenvectors of a a transpose u i are equal to 1 over sigma i multiplied by a multiplied by the eigenvectors of a transpose a. And again, those are the eigenvectors that share the same eigenvalue sigma i squared. Very well, now why is this important? For some machine learning applications, you are faced with the covariance matrix. So if you have some data matrix X, which has X1, X2, up to, let's say, Xn, the dimension of this will be D by N. And in general, you want for N to be much larger than D. The number of examples should be much larger than the number of dimensions. So suppose that N is equal to, let's say, 10 power 4, and D is only equal to 10 power 2. Then the covariance matrix C will be equal to 1 over n x x transpose, assuming that the data are centered, and this will have a dimension of d by d. 
in other machine learning applications like the kernel version of the support vector machines, you will need another matrix K, which is equal to X transpose X. But in this case, the covariance matrix will have dimensions of 100 by 100, while the matrix K will have dimensions of 10,000 by 10,000. And for this application, you sometimes want to get the non-zero eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of the matrix K. But this matrix K is a slightly larger matrix than this matrix C. And if you want to use a software efficiently to get the non-zero eigenvalues of the matrix K, then you better try to get the non-zero eigenvalues for the matrix C, since you know that those non-zero eigenvalues are the same as those non-zero eigenvalues. So you will be able to get the results you want much, much faster, since this matrix is much, much smaller. After that, using those relations that map the eigenvectors of A, A transpose to the eigenvectors of A transpose A, you'll be able to also get the eigenvectors of the larger matrix K right here without trying to directly get the eigen decomposition of the larger matrix K. Finally, you might now have a question saying that getting the eigen decomposition of this matrix C will actually get you the U vectors. And you initially wanted to get the V vectors because you know that X multiplied by VI is equal to sigma I multiplied by UI. So it is quite easy to get UI from VI while the reverse is slightly more complicated, as it might involve the inverse of this matrix X, or the pseudo inverse in this case, since the matrix X is not a square matrix, but anyway, it will need more work. It is doable, but it will need more work. If you don't want to do this extra work, you can simply do the following. You can define the matrix B to be equal to X transpose. So this is a matrix of data points, but you stack your examples in rows instead of having the examples in columns. So here you have n examples in this dimension and d dimensions here. And so the covariance matrix C will now be equal to 1 over n b transpose b. The dimension of this will still be a d by d matrix. Now in this situation, the matrix K will be equal to b B transpose. But now this matrix K is equal to an N by N matrix. And now if you get the eigenvectors of B transpose B, you will have gotten the V's of the matrix B. And after that, B multiplied by VI will give you sigma I multiplied by UI. So those are the V's of the matrix B, not of the matrix X. Those are the U's of the matrix B, not of the matrix X. We can actually call those V, B, I and those U because this is one vector U of the matrix B, not of the matrix X. But we actually have a very interesting relation between the V's and U's of the matrices B and X. We know that X can be decomposed to be U of the matrix X sigma of the matrix X and V transpose of the matrix X. Now the matrix B is equal to U of the matrix B sigma of the matrix B and V transpose of the matrix B. But we know that B is equal to X transpose. So actually UB sigma B, VB transpose is equal to X transpose, which is equal to BX sigma X transpose and UX transpose. So this means that the U's for the matrix B are equal to the V's of the matrix X and the V's of the matrix V are equal to the U's of the matrix X. Very well, there is one final naming convention I forgot to mention before, which is if we have a matrix A as U sigma V transpose, then the vectors right here are called the left singular vectors, the left singular vectors, and the vectors right here are called the right singular vectors because they come on the right of this matrix sigma which has the singular values. So this means here that the left singular vectors of the matrix B 
are equal to the right singular vectors of the matrix B transpose. And the right singular vectors of the matrix B are equal to the left singular vectors of the matrix B transpose for a general matrix B.